Hey Gemini, this is your general tarot reading for Gemini, Sun, Moon and Ascendant or Rising Sign for the month of March. Gemini, let's do as we always do. We're going to shuffle the cards and wait on all the right ones to come out for you, my love. And in the meantime, let's talk about the energies that you may feel throughout the month. So, we're leaving behind February, still feeling the effect of the full moon that happened in Virgo in your fourth house. So it was a time, really Gemini, where you just needed to maybe go home, go visit family, just go back to your own house and just get some good quality rest, just to switch off your cell phone, just to not be bothered by anybody else's drama, not be bothered by all the stuff that might be happening in your work life too, but just to say, I need to get back to my roots, I need to get back to feeling grounded on solid earth, I've just been too chaotic. So there might have been lots of good food, lots of good homemade food, yeah. And just lots of nice quiet time where you re-engaged a little bit with your feelings. See, fourth house is where we feel cared for, we feel nurtured as a kind of Piscean card comes out. And we'll talk about that because there's a lot going on at the moment in Pisces in March. Uh, it is their season after all. So you were feeling that need to get back into a quieter space in yourself. And you could have been very sensitive, you know, feeling the emotions of other people, feeling, you know, watching movies and crying because you've connected so deeply with this person. And again, watching movies is quite good for you, Gemini, because there's always that kind of release when you can identify with the character and so on like that. It's just part of something that you have going on, which is kind of cute. And also, it's, it's just that feeling of wanting somebody to validate your emotions. That was very, very important. Whatever it is you're feeling, somebody it must be shared and somebody must recognize it and feel it too. So that was the sensitivity going on there. But when you kind of had that moment of getting back in touch with your roots, getting back in touch with yourself, you were more able to go back and tackle some of the work that you were doing, tackle some of the responsibilities that you've taken on with a better sense of, I'm not going to be rocked by this, I'm not going to get so stressed out by this, and I'm not going to be aggravated so much by it. So yeah, you touch down, touch down to earth so that you could get your strength back and return fighting fit, Gemini. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot going on this month in your career sector or in terms of your ambitions or, you know, wanting to please key people or being a very reputable and responsible person yourself, Gemini. So there's a lot of energy going on there. So let me explain. You've the Sun and Pisces in the 10th house. Mercury, your ruler in the 10th house. But on March 5th, Mercury is, da, da, da. he's going retrograde, I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Some of you don't mind, I know that you're kind of good with this energy. Some of you say, wow, I don't mind Mercury retrograding, it's a kind of time for me to just close my mind down and just relax. Or some of you are just saying, no, I'm going to lose my superpower. <laughs> yeah, and my mind is going to be melted, melted, melted. Yeah, one way or another, you're going to feel it, Gemini. You definitely are. Um, Mercury retrograding in, in the 10th house. So this could be a lot to do with your work, for example. You may have to go back and try to clear up some misunderstanding that happened in work, maybe with a document, maybe with a client, or maybe with your boss or your peers uh, or your upper management, say. There, there could have been a real moment where, whoa, 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 this month, we need to go back and clarify what needs to be done here once and for all. There could be some vagueness in work at the moment. You know, people not following through with what they offer to do, or people just all in a mess, disorganized, kind of not with it, you know? And you're stuck in that. So there may be a moment in work that you have to go back maybe and finish another person's work, not just your work, but somebody else's, or there may be files or something that you have to go back and look at all over again. Yeah, 
because something was missing the first time around. There could be also this strange mood in work wherever you are. Now, I know not all of you work. Some of you are stay-at-home parents. Some of you are unemployed or retired. And in this case, if it's not your career, it's where you have a position of authority, where you're the head of the family, say, or you're seen as a respectable person in the neighborhood. There is one area in your life that people, you know, they say, if we need something done, we're going to Gemini. You know, you are seen as that in some way, shape or form. Okay, just to explain that in case I see people saying, but I don't have a job. <laughs> I know, I know, you have to think broader than this, which you can do, no problem. And the, there may be a real moment of an, a new mood in work. This mood, it's almost like it's all a bit dreamy and ethereal. It's all a bit you know, looking at your colleagues, well, at least the ones you get on with, <laughs> and saying, why don't we just go out and grab a few drinks? Or why don't we kind of have an early lunch and not come back soon? It's all like less work, more being in a mood, more being in a vibe, more feeling things out. And it, it could be even something as simple as you're being very sensitive in your work environment. So you might find yourself distracted by a kind of irrelevant thing. You know, you might have an office and it's always business, business, phone calls, work, da, 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 whatever it is you're doing. And then suddenly you look over at a corner and see a plant. And then you'll see another plant and you say, I never really noticed them before. I wonder, do they need water? <laughs> and then you might become really... I focused on making sure that the plants are okay. I'm just giving you that weird example just to give you the vibe. It's like something random or that's usually hidden, that usually nobody gives a shit about. You're suddenly caring. People are saying, why do you want to go in and clean out that junk room in work? Or why do you want to sift through all the files? Or why do you want to go back and look at, why do, why do you want to make work for yourself? But for you, it's like, no, this is a hidden corner. This is a lost corner. I need to give it a bit of attention. So you could be working very quietly this month, giving lost things attention, maybe even lost clients. It's a great month in work particular. I know I keep focusing on work, but it's where a lot of the energy is. Um, it's a great month for you to maybe go back to some old work that you had started, some project that you had began months ago, maybe even more, and reconnect. You know, if you were trying to line something up with a bunch of clients and it just fell by the wayside, this is a perfect moment to go back and say, do you remember that thing we talked about? Would you like to meet up and maybe see if we can revive it a little bit? <laughs> Put some wind in the sails again. So. It's not really about starting anything new this month, Gemini. It's very much about putting your mind in what you had done in the past, tidying it up and being a little bit sensitive. And I like that, Gemini, when you are a sensitive soul, you really are. And when you get into that zone of really caring about something or even somebody, a little lost soul in work, somebody who is always hidden in a corner. You might be very kind of attracted by them this month and you might start having conversations or go out to lunch with them and you've never done that before. It's almost like you get into this real kind of, I will save you. <laughs> but it's beautiful and it does suit you, Gemini, because like, like I was going to say, when you're in that mode, people really love it. People, when they get your full, beautiful Gemini mind and heart, there's a huge sense of magic in that, huge. And people feel special when you give them that attention. And I'm going to say this too, as I'm looking down here, uh, look at this card came out. You're saying, yeah, but there's some people I'm not wanting to give special attention to. And I get that there may be the boss or some difficult people in work, difficult teams, team members. Uh, there's always that one difficult team member and you could say, well, I'm definitely not giving them that beautiful Gemini heart and mind this month.
they can get lost, they can get hidden, they can be resigned to the corner where the plants, which got forgotten, lay. <laughs> yeah, let them there. I'm, I'm taking care of everybody else. It's almost like you're going to be a nanny in, in the office space this month, taking care, but drawing a line. You see, this is very important. Drawing a line between you and the game players and the power players. Now, I don't mean power players like you're ambitious, you want to get ahead, you want to do your thing, and you want to be in with, you know, a position in with people who are key players. That's fine. What you don't want is these power play bitches hanging around. They don't seem to get your attention this month because boundaries need to happen this month. But I'm going to say this. This is, seems to be like a paradox. The boundaries will come between you and these difficult people when you're more relaxed around them. It's almost, I wonder, I wonder, okay? I wonder if you treat these difficult people that you work with like those old forgotten plants in the corner and give them a little bit of heart and mind energy and you're saying, oh my God, I'm not listening to this. There's no way I'm doing that. But wait, wait, wait. You might find that that's the magic that was kind of needed to turn them around to get them off your case or to get them away from you. I see here, there is a beautiful, soulful act of generosity and kindness that you could do within your career that really makes magic for you. And you won't do it for the reward. It's not like going in to do something, you know, I'm going to go in and buy everybody, you know, donuts for the day, which, you know, do that because I think everybody likes that or whatever. But you're going to do something kind. I don't know what that is. It could be just helping somebody who can't get through their work. Just giving them a little bit of encouragement or something. Not, I don't mean do their work for them, but a little bit of encouragement. And this kindness, Gemini, it just seems to get you about a million gold stars just glowing around you. And even the difficult people that you work with or that you're around seem to appreciate it. And it will surprise you. What I, think it, what I think it will do, Gemini, it will make you say, I'm not going to forget this mood. I'm not going to let anybody take this good feeling away from me. I prefer it when the work I do is flowing nicely and everybody's getting along and, you know, <clears throat> things are moving smooth and we're all having a bit of fun or a laugh. I prefer it like that. And I see that maybe my contribution to that happening is to be in the heart zone. I know, I know you're probably watching this at the start of March going, what? But just wait till the month goes through. You might see how this unfolds. And I am feeling that energy, Gemini, that you are going to get such a huge level of respect when you do this, a genuine kind thing and lend your support. And I think that's what it does. Apart from people admiring you, they then start to support you. So in turn, your life becomes easier. <laughs> it has that knock-on effect. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's, it's a win-win. It's a win-win. Yeah. And it brings back more. This actually came out first. It brings back more positivity after what you had seen was a bit of a catastrophe. So I'm going to lay the cards down there. We'll wait for a few more and we'll keep talking about the energies. And because of that, I wonder, Gemini, you've the new moon in Pisces on March 6th in your 10th house. So something I think is changing. There's a gear, a switch going off, just a, a, an absolute, I know how to do this moment within your career, within how to be a responsible person in your own life. And you're saying, I know how this flows now. And I'm going to encourage more of that to happen. 
You're becoming very responsible, Gemini. Very, very responsible in ways that even surprise you. You're finding good people around you to rely on and depend on. And in turn, you're also stepping up to that plate and saying, well, look, I see that I can depend on you. You're also going to get my Gemini loyalty back in return. But it's, it's like you've tested people to see, well, look, I've all this... As I said, I've all this loyalty and support to give to people around me, in general, with my fam family, friends, co-workers, whatever. But I've spotted that one or two of them have really been good to me, so they're going to get 100% from me. And I think that's what's opening up for you. It's the division between who gets all your effort, who gets all your loyalty, who do you stand by, shoulder to shoulder? Who do you respect? And who do you want to be, it, it, be seen as? That's all opening up for you. It's gorgeous. Some of you, on a very literal level, could be really looking to change up your career this month and maybe go into something that's a little bit more creative, certainly a little bit more intuitive, where you have to rely on your inner muse to guide you through whatever it is you want to do with your career. Maybe music, the arts, uh, it, doing the psychic arts, healing, uh, therapy of any kind, opening up to that, uh, counselling also. Uh, these are wonderful times for those of you who want to change into that type of scene. So very, very nice energy. Now, on March 6th, the big one, Uranus, the big revelation, the big shocker, the one who says, I am going to take you into your future, but I'm beginning now. <laughs> I know you're not ready, but we're beginning your future today. He is moving into Taurus, into your 12th house. Now, Gemini, this is quite a journey you're about to go on. You already have the two big heavyweights, Saturn and Pluto, in the 8th house in February Venus was also there in the house of transformation, transformation, uh, letting things go so that they can be transformed so you can rise up as somebody new as a car just fell on the ground. Hold on, Jim, and I have to get this. <coughs> oh, come up. Wouldn't come up. Yeah, eighth house, the eight, eighth house, changing your mind, transforming your mind, transforming how you think about certain things, transforming what you believe and what you no longer believe in this world, things like that. Who, who is with you and who is against you? So you already have those heavyweights going on and now you've Uranus going into the 12th house. So he's the one who absolutely cleans everything up and ends things once and for all. So you've got this energy of things this month been thrown up into the surface for you to deal with once and for all. Fears, old traumas, old pains, old hurts, old psychological loops that you got trapped in, patterns of behavior which you may learned, which we, you may have learned from childhood. You know, uh, all this gets brought up for you to finally release so it's an approximate, say approximately seven years where you are being shown things that you hadn't noticed about yourself before in order for you to use your wonderful Gemini mind to examine it and say, is that the reason why I can't get into a good relationship? It is. Maybe I need to change that. Is that the reason why I can't earn the kind of money I want? I need to change that. Is that the reason why I have an irrational fear of flying or spiders or something? And you say, it is. I, and I know now how to get, get rid of that. It's not important in my life. And certainly, it's not going to drive you anymore. I, we often think that we're being driven by our conscious thoughts. Very often it's by our subconscious, what we've been programmed to believe, what we've got trapped inside of us at some point. Maybe when we were a kid, we got scared of something and carried that through. And we can't remember why we have certain fears about X, Y, Z. 
But like I said, that's all coming up to be reviewed. And Gemini, by the end of this transit in seven or so years, you will really be an entirely changed person. You won't have those fears. For some of you, you might, you, for some of you might kind of have anxieties or social anxieties that you might take a lot of drink, drink a lot or take drugs just to compensate or have certain states of mind that you think you will never be able to escape. This is a process that can potentially release you from crutches and finally and totally heal you. It's a very beautiful thing, Gemini, very beautiful. You really, you really are going to emerge as just a whole new butterfly after this. Now it's long, I know it's approximately seven years, but um, it begins. And for some of you, it could begin very, very early. Some of you, you may not see it for a long time, but you may start seeing the first of it now, questioning things. Why did I follow this choice in career? Why did I marry that person? Why did I do this? This isn't me. And all the while you're beginning to come up with solutions to that. It's nice. Twelfth house is also very psychic. You've big heavy hitters now in two psychic houses, the eighth house and the twelfth house. So if you're on a mission to really dig deep and go really where other people daren't go, with your mind, with your psyche, with your investigation, with, you know, pushing into corners and pushing into places that few people would dare to go. This is where you get really powerful, Gemini, really strong. You're getting stronger psychologically and it's wonderful, wonderful. So that was quite a thing. We're starting a big thing this month, Gemini. Now, March 20th, Sun and Aries in your 11th house, the Sun is shining in your house of fame, in your house of success, in your house of finally being able to see that something is really kicking off for you in the future. Some good times with friends, sharing nice things maybe on social media as we come towards the end of the month. There might be one or two hiccups on social media or with groups of people at the very beginning of the month, but don't let that knock you because when the sun comes in on March 20th, you and your friends are going to have a good time and certainly it might be an opportunity to meet new groups, new teams, new people. Just let it flow better. Um, full moon in Libra in your fifth house. Okay, so by the time this month really starts coming to an end, you're more into really needing to go out and have some fun. There's a real soul urge and a need to get out there and let your hair down, to get out there and be creative, spend time with children maybe perhaps, but to get out there and to step away from the crowd a little bit and to assert yourself as an individual uh, and do something that pleases you, something that makes your beautiful Gemini heart happy. Now again, towards the end of the month, Venus is moving into Pisces into your 10th house, so again, more good flow happens. It's all the good flow happening in work. Mercury does go direct again on March 26th. And then there's good news. The very last day of the month, Mars is bringing you back your energy that you thought you'd lost. Yeah, he's coming back to Gemini. He'll be in Gemini. So your first house, you'll feel more invigorated. You'll feel like the whole of this month will feel like you're all in a bit of a dream state. Not a, not a huge amount of energy to do anything. It's okay. It's not just you. It'll be all of you beautiful Geminis going through this, more or less. And at the end of it, your strength returns. I like that. So Gemini, we've got five cards, five kind of very interesting cards. I'm going to start choosing some more here. Okay, yeah, two of coins. The Ace of Cups, very, very nice. King of Pentacles. Four more, Gemini. Page of Pentacles. So towards the end of the month, you're very focused on making money, of course, with Venus going into your 10th house. Some of you could be looking at your career and saying, I need to be making more money while I'm doing this. You know, if I'm going to be in this job, they better be paying me. They better be paying me. 
yeah the sun yeah some success towards the end of the month definitely within your career because maybe you've dug up an old idea and had some success with that okay i'll take the top one that came out there yeah the wheel turning okay gemini let's do this thing 25 minutes okay anyway ta-da your general overview so we begin with a Piscean style card and it's Pisces, 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 Pisces everywhere. It's Pisces season and it's affecting your workplace or where, wherever it is you are seen as a respectable, ambitious or responsible person. And this is a real moment where you want to get into that zone. We spoke about it where you want to feel that mood of just not... Being, you don't want your work to be mean, heavy, oppressive, demanding anything too much from you. Instead, you want to just go into this with a more creative vibe, as I said, a more intuitive mood, being sensitive and feeling things out. It's almost like if there are obstacles in your way in work particularly. It's like we discussed, the more gentle you are, the more involved you are in a heart space, you can soften even the worst of, of them in work. Yeah, you can soften them. Very much so. Some act of kindness. He is the master of acting kind, doing kind things. Can really even tame the beast himself. Yeah, absolutely. Now for some of you, I think there's a great sense of maturity coming this month, emotional maturity, that again pleases the boss, pleases people who are more likely to give you support. This is a Capricorn card and it's also a Saturn card and that's in the 8th house where you get support from other people. So <laughs> again, the more you trust your inner muse, your inner creativity, your inner healer, your inner sensitivity, your inner gentle approach, then it tames the savage beast. We talked about that. We talked about it. Sometimes we could say this is somebody holding their cup of love towards a Capricorn. It's possible. Uh, Capricorn is in your eighth house, so it could also be Scorpio. So say Scorpio Capricorn energy. It's likely it could happen. It's not the strongest energy I'm feeling, though. Um, now, something is coming down. I think you're getting more confident in yourself this month, Gemini, when you're feeling that little bit softer. You don't feel so trapped or oppressed by somebody. If it's a relationship between you and a partner or a friend or a colleague, there's a real moment where you kind of say, no, I'm taking the upper hand here, and I'm... I'm going to ruin their way of doing things. Now, that sounds like a really negative thing. This is the art or the act of destroying somebody's bad behavior. Gemini, are you going into work hoping, hoping that somebody gets called out on something, that somebody's such an asshole or such a demon in work that you want to see them lose their job, or you want to see them get the hell away, you want to see something backfire. They've played unfair. They've been, they've, they've just been a hindrance in your life and work, and maybe not just you, maybe with other people too. They, they've just been that asshole in the workspace, and you've been actively trying to think about how to kind of make this come back in their face a little bit. I know that doesn't sound like the nicest thing to do, but I think you're going back a little bit this month, maybe with some colleagues or some work issue where you you kind of rally some support against somebody in work that you think is being mean, unfair, unjust in some way, because you want to see that fall. Now again, I'm going to say this again, Gemini, Sure, there may be a real asshole in work, somebody that needs to be challenged, somebody that needs to be faced, addressed, called out on their bullshit. Fine, absolutely do it. But hopefully you'll do it with some level of sensitivity. 
it's almost like the feeling that you can understand this situation a whole lot better when you are in that more sensitive mood. And when you do, then you can see that there is optimism returning. There's a, a something good is returning here. A, a new way to handle this work situation is coming in. A new future, a new direction, new success. So there is a, a, a big something happening in your career where you've to almost destroy something or even somebody's influence. Again, be sensitive about that. You, we should never really destroy people. We can certainly call their behavior up for review, but, uh, but certainly there's the element of destroying an old way of tackling some situation with the work that you're doing and starting again under the new moon in Pisces, uh, bringing you into a better future and work. And then the sun in the 11th house, very Aquarius style, bringing you into the future. Hmm. You're going to bring more balance into some situation that really almost drove you crazy. Was it a thing in work, Gemini, that you could not figure out how to handle some situation? Could you not figure out the right way to do your work? Could you not figure out how to get along with certain people? Could you not figure out how to expose some bullshit? There's something that it's been on your mind, on your mind, and you've been trapped, and you've been turning up, it seems, for work every day, but with blinkers on saying, oh my God, if I just pretend I don't see them, or if I pretend I don't see this situation, if I ignore it, if I ignore it, I, then I can just get on with my day. I just have to keep going. I have to keep going. I can't find the solution to this right now. So <clears throat> I'll, I'll just turn up and just show up and just keep doing what I'm doing. But you get an opportunity this month, really, you get an opportunity this month to balance that. Is there an unfairness to do with money? Are you not being paid enough? Uh, are you not being treated fairly where you need more balance, but you're getting the kind of support? Did you need support from other people with your work ideas, perhaps? I think you'll get that. Maybe even financial support. That could come your way, certainly, this month. Some, if you've been looking for somebody to invest in a project that you're doing, that could also happen. Some, you're, you're bringing balance back and you're increasing your potential to make money here after a period of, I have no idea what to do and I'm just stuck, 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 stuck. Seems to be all about money and work here, Gemini. Usually there's a kind of a balance of things, but the main focus is about where you're putting your drive, your energy, your ambitions, your passions. And of course, we say work, it's not always work. It could be your creativity. It could be where you want to lead your family. You know, it could be where you want to, I don't know, <laughs> maybe you are the head of some team, some group, some society, some, a band, <laughs> you know. Uh, but either way, the big focus is on all that this month. Now, we, here we do have something. This is a new passion coming for you in your ability to make money. Venus going into Pisces in the 10th house on March 26th. A new love for what you're doing within your career. A new love. A new love of... I, th I know it sounds weird, but a new love of making money. You, you'll, you'll treat it with more respect. You, you may have to ask for more money. You may have to up your price if you're self-employed. There's something that you, you're healing some great imbalance, so it seems, to do with money, but also to do with your sense of purpose. You're feeling more grounded and more enthusiastic now about continuing with some project. Now, okay, so I'm going down a different route here too. I said a few moments ago, some of you should be, could be holding your cup of love to an earth sign most likely Capricorn, could be Taurus or Virgo either, but there is a cup of love being handed to the earth sign. Mm. Yeah, love, love, love.
coming to an earth sign. Some of you are saying, I don't know an earth sign, earth, sun, moon, or ascended. If it's somebody that could be in business, somebody who could already be established in their life, well off, or achieving some level of success already, um, they're very, very interested in having things. Like they might have the nice car, they might have the, the nice gadgets, technology, they might have the nice house or the nice apartment. That, that rocks their boat. And you could be holding your cup of love up towards them. Could you be holding your cup of love towards the boss, Venus going into the 10th house? Or a key person, a key figure, somebody that you certainly admire and respect. Somebody that you look up to greatly. If you're already in a, in a relationship, it could be the energy of you looking at somebody that you do respect, maybe within your career or somewhere that you're interested in, and really giving them a huge sense of admiration, maybe learning a lot from them. But for everybody else, it could be love. But there's a great healing coming to your ability to balance your life, to feel more grounded, certainly. Because it's almost like this, Gemini, with Uranus going into Taurus, that's an Earth sign, it's, it's giving you a better sense of being grounded in your life so that you can really examine and heal, holding up for inspection, your purpose in this life. What is all this for? Why do I do the work I do? Why do I earn the money I earn? And the big light is shining on that saying, no, examine this. Yeah, hold it up to the light and see if what you're doing in your life is the real thing. Hold it up. And when you do, you might be able to observe where to go next. It's like, I think you may have underestimated some of your successes, Gemini. I think that You've been striving so hard for so long that you haven't stopped long enough to really appreciate that you've done so well in so many areas of your life. You've achieved an awful lot. And that deserves respect. That deserves success. That A feeling like you're achieving. It deserves a bit of a celebration. And in some cases too, there is the opportunity for something good to happen within your career, some luck, some success, definitely. Particularly if you need support from other people, financial support, somebody's backup in some way, somebody to like what you're doing, to, to say, I'm, sorry, somebody to say, I like your idea and I'm going to support you. So that's a success, which in turn helps you run with your passions in a totally new direction. I have to say, it's, some of you are definitely changing up your career and you're going into something that definitely involves an inner sense of creativity, an inner sense of intuitiveness, an inner sense of he wanting to heal, wanting to speak from the heart, wanting to be in a zone, a creative zone, a feeling zone. And you want to run with that. And it will be a success for you. Because you're passionate about it. You're definitely passionate about it. Now I will say this, some of you are desperately passionate about getting some sunshine. Maybe wherever you live it's not very bright at the moment and you're saying, oh I need to go on adventures. I need to get out there and I need some sunshine on my beautiful Gemini buddy. <laughs> so either way, it's it's all nice, it's all beautiful energy. Gemini, I'm going to leave it at that, my love. And of course, as you know, if you want to get into the real nitty-gritty, this is just the general landscape of the month. Get into the nitty-gritty, come along to the Vimeo readings, the deep read, all linked down there below. We talk about relationships. You know, if you're looking for love, where you might find it this month. Your career, your money, which seems to be very important for you this month your family, friends, and so on. And we can dig into all of that and find out what the heck is going on. So do come along, and it's all linked down there below. Again, the Vimeo Deep Read. But my gorgeous, I'm going to leave it at that. And as always, I'm going to leave you with all my love and happiness for your month ahead. And I leave you with a great big kiss. Mwah! Until next month, Gemini. Bye.